Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the fluoride controversy and we're fortunate to have with us to talk about this very, very controversial item of fluoride, uh, Mr. Daniel Stockton. And of course, Mr. Stockton is a health researcher for the uh, Lilly Center, a public health and environmental health uh, concern located in Brentwood, uh, Tennessee. And of course, Mr. Stockton, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you for having me. And to tell you, Mr. Stockton, how uh, delighted we are to have you here this morning. And I think that our audience has already identified this setup that we have here. And I think this might be our first over uh, the last 25 or 30 years. But nevertheless, I think it's very, very important because the issue that we're going to deal with this morning is an issue that people might have a difficult time relating to unless they can identify uh, this issue of fluoride. And so that's what we want to talk about this morning, about this as an issue, as a controversy. And of course, uh, before we do that, let's have uh, us, let's give you an opportunity to give us some information about Daniel Stockton. Okay. Uh, your background, your education, and some of the things that led you to the Lilly Center as a health researcher. Well, thank you. Um, we, I'm one of those people, uh, I have a background in public health and environmental health. I've been in it for 17 years. Uh, I'm one of those people that you s used to see, or some people do see, that put a big white suit or suit on or one of the big respiratory protection systems on their back, and I, I used to dive into spills of radioactive materials, of biologic agents, um, uh, dealt with chemical hazards, hazardous waste. So that's what I kind of cut my teeth on in my public health career. And over the years, I've worked in health care as well as in environmental health. And um, we got involved in this. I work for a company called the Lilly Center. We offer public health and environmental health training classes is what we do. We're, and um, we got involved in this issue about fluoride, sort of not really planning on doing it. It came at us kind of sideways. And what we, you may, some people in this area may see signs on the side of the road that says fluoridated drinking water. Mm -hmm. Well, my boss had a, a reaction on her skin and she was asking me one day, could it possibly be caused by mm -hmm. fluoride in the water? She was new to the area, had never been around fluoridated water. Well, I did what I've done hundreds of times in my career. I backed away from a chemical and just looked at it. What, what does it do in the body and how does it affect it and these kind of things. What we found just made our jaw drop. Mm -hmm. and a lot of information of the, on this nature has come out in the past few years and we have found that the majority of health professionals uh, certainly average citizens mm -hmm. and uh, people at water districts just don't know some of the real basics so that's all we wanted to talk about today keep it real simple and mm -hmm. and, and real practical mm -hmm. and um, so our idea is to just present some of these facts mm -hmm. in the way that the average person you don't have to be a scientist mm -hmm. anything at all because yeah. there's a real couple of fundamental key points that we would hope folks mm -hmm. listening to this can take away. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things that when we think about fluoride, uh, I think most people generally uh, relate that to uh, some kind of dental operation of dental sides of cavities and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But what you're about to tell us now is that this is an issue that covers not only uh, dental science, but all of these things that you have in here have some aspect of that uh, uh, of fluoride in these. Let's talk about it from that perspective. Sure, talk sure. To us about that. Most people are only familiar with their toothpaste tube. Mm -hmm. It says fluoride on it. Mm -hmm. And we've always thought that fluoride just prevents cavities, and we've been doing it for about 50 years or more. Mm -hmm. um, the issue is, is that a bunch of information has now come out that we're not just getting fluoride in our toothpaste. Mm -hmm. We're getting it in our water, and we're getting it in a lot of other sources. Mm -hmm. But what people don't know is that fluoride is actually a poison. If you look on the back of your toothpaste tube, you'll see there's a warning. If, you, if a child swallows more than is used for brushing, it says to call the poison control center. Most people never really read that. So the thing that we start talking to people about is that fluoride is a cumulative poison. And that's a really key point. What that means is the little bits that you get over the years start adding up and it's the cumulative lifetime effect they can cause a number of health mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. So that's what we wanted to talk about. And most people don't know mm -hmm. that fluoride comes out of the earth. It looks kind of like this. Mm -hmm. It's just a, uh, it's calcium fluoride. This is where it's usually found in earth. But the kind of fluoride that we use today mm -hmm. to add to our drinking water to, that we said, to prevent cavities in kids, mm -hmm entirely different than this. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to talk about that and, and talk a little bit about the history of it. Okay. It's been going on for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. and, and so now we've had our first full generation of people who've grown up getting little doses of this cum accumulating mm -hmm. poison. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the key issues is that's why the health effects are happening. And cities across 
the united states mm -hmm. are starting to reject this mm -hmm. six of said six of seven cities in early november that were looking at fluoridation rejected it and so there's a lot of issues they affect certain groups more than others mm -hmm. and we want to talk about that we think your viewers would be interested very to know good that. and of course we're getting ready uh, this is talking for our first commercial break mm -hmm. after which we'll come back and we'll give you an opportunity to uh further inform us in reference to uh, this as an issue and to uh, perhaps uh, give us any kind of advice that we might need in order to uh, understand it better and to fight against it. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. The guest is...